What's up, Capo and Nation? Welcome back. Welcome, 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 welcome back to the Capo Experience Podcast. Thank you so much for coming back. This is going to be a very exciting episode because this is 100th episode, which is I'm very excited to have this and especially to celebrate the, the 100th episode. I'm having the special guest, my mestre, mestre Mudinho, the one that mentored me, the one that guides me and, and is, is helping me to grow my capoeira here. Not just my personal capoeira, but also my capoeira school. And in the growing of, of this, it's also the game, right? The capoeira game is part of our, our it is part of our capoeira, right? So we train, we we practice and we train out of class and we train and we travel to develop this very nice craft called capoeira game, right? So my conversation with Mr. Mendinho, we break down the capoeira game in many aspects, right? So we first, we talk about what is the capoeira game, some key components of the capoeira game, how to understand or analyze this this beautiful craft and and which is the capoeira game and all any uh, other aspects which is the the how to stay calm during the, the very confusing game or violent game especially when we get are getting started so we don't get too too heated right away right also some training methods to improve the game some uh and and if the difference in between short sequence or long sequence to train which are the advantage of each so that way should we train short sequence or should we train long sequence which one will be better to improve our capoeira game so please let me know if you have any questions let me know if you want to know more about the capoeira game because uh the feedback from you once you you listen to this podcast and let me know with comments so that way i i can see if you have any any questions there out there for for us to answer either mr Mindinho or myself and that way we can get connected get more personal in this especially the capoeira game is such something so tricky to to understand and and so uh huge huge it's a huge huge component in our trainings so the you know, on Sunday the Capoeira game is a big part of us and we time and we process with training and traveling and everything you will understand more about the, the Capoeira game so let me know if you have any questions and let me know if you, if you want to learn more about this but I'm not going to hold you back anymore let's have this episode 100 with Mr. Mendinho. Please enjoy. Please pay attention because it's a lot of good, really, really good information. Okay, let's go. Let's have fun. And remember to share this episode. Share, especially this episode. Share it with a friend because the uh, understanding the Capoeira game is a big part. Of, again, I want to repeat myself. And right now, right now, right now, pass this screenshot it and send it to a friend and post it somewhere on social media and tag me the Capoeira Experience Podcast that way I, get, I know you are listening to this okay so no more uh, talking now talking but we miss me <laughs> alright you know what it's called me peace what's up Capoeira Nation welcome back to the Capoeira Experience Podcast thank you so much for coming back to, to listening to the podcast I'm very happy to to finally get to the 100th episode and especially very happy to for and be honored to to have my first 100th episode uh, a guest that I've been admired since the first time I saw him and the first time I saw him I actually uh, saw him describing something very complex in the in capoeira and especially I guess probably we we from the very beginning we try to understand how the capoeira game works and and sometimes as a teachers instructors we try to describe that to beginners and i think we can make it even more complicated when we try to explain it so uh once i saw the video i i think uh gave me the idea to to go over this because i uh 
I still, after 20 years, I'm still learning and, and try to understand and analyze these different aspects of the Capoeira game. And to not make this too long as an introduction, uh, please uh, let me introduce my Mestre, Mestre Mindinho. How are you doing, Mestre? I'm doing great, man. Thank you so much for having me here. Of course, of course, yes. Uh, like, like I said before, uh, he's pretty much about uh, to talk about the Capoeira game, breaking down the, the, the structure of the Capoeira game. And since that time, I remember you saw, you, you made a while ago those, those videos of, I think you were in, in your studio in, in San Diego, where you explained like the Capoeira game is like a conversation and it's all, and, and kind of like break it down on, on those videos. Correct, correct. That was in San Diego just a while. I think I would say almost 10 years ago. Yeah, it's a little bit more maybe. Oh, wow. Well. You know? Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a, like a seminar, you know, I was doing for my students and a few other guests, you know. Yeah. And then we decided to kind of record the seminar. And it was something a little bit different because it was more, uh, more like a conversation, more less movements and much more like the theory you know, and trying to answer a few questions, you know, because I noticed my students have a lot of questions and then I just try to help them with that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Guess, especially the, the uh, Capoeira game, it, it gets tricky in how, how to, to break it down on many aspects, you know, and, and since, I, uh, since I saw those videos, I was like, I think, this, I think now it's a good time to, to, to go over all those kind of points and see how you, your perspective in the Capoeira game and how, how you break it down and how, how we can see it from, from your eyes. Well, it's like, it's, it's a little bit hard because I have a few aspects that's, that's complex for people sometimes, you know, take a long time to be able to understand. And that's, I think, for me, the hard part. The physical part, the aspect, like you go to the heart and you see it, and you see the movements and you see it, the interaction, you say, oh, I love that. I want to do that. Yeah. But have this part behind what's take a long time for people really kind of what's going on here. You first have to experience and then you try, oh, and to figure out actually exists that part behind, sometimes it takes five or 10 years to really figure out exists that. Yeah. And then yeah. once that happens, you take more five, 10 years to figure out how it works, you know? <laughs> And that's a long time, you know. Yeah. It should be like that. It's not that hard. The thing is, for me, basically, is Capoeira is about to express yourself. And the part people ha have a hard time to understand is everybody used to express yourself with words, you know. Yes. You need something. I want a water. I want a food. I'm a kid. You express yourself with words. But uh, in Capoeira, we express ourselves with movements. Yeah, 100%. And that is that's the part what got complicated. People not used to that, and they have to learn a brand new language how to express themselves with movements and not with words. Yeah, you know? yeah. It's not exactly. just like movements in the air. You know, have a lot of uh, uh, have a lot of. I will say, have a lot of meaning behind those movements. Of course. Not every game have meaning behind the movements, but when you see amazing games, when you see very nice games, you know, things like touch you in your heart. Yeah. You say, oh, I really know what it is, but I understood something in that game, you know? And that's when the difference, you know, you can find in Capoeira. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because you, you see a flow and in, in the interconnection, the two players. And then you can see like, oh, this, this is actually a really nice flow in between both of them. And sometimes this also when when you see some different Capoeira games where it pretty much is solos, so it's two people playing together but play by themselves. If that makes sense. Yes, exactly. And that's is a lot of is they come with Capoeira too. It's yeah, exactly. Integrate with the parts. Like sometimes people want to go there and just you know I want to show my movements. I just I don't want to really have an interaction. I want to just be myself and show my movements being order being training and that's okay yeah but sometimes in capoeira you want to see the other part sometimes you want to interact with your partner and actually have this kind of like uh exchange yeah you know that's why it's so so interesting when you be able to learn to express yourself and have exchange 
the, your perspective has got to totally change. Yeah, yeah, correct. And and I guess that that's how we can describe what the Capoeira game is, right? So it's, it will be like interaction in between two to express yourself or, or, or how, how will yeah. you characterize this? A lot of, a lot of, um, a lot of masters, oh, they make the, the analogy of Capoeira is a dialogue, aren't you saying? Yeah. And yes, I agree 100%, but Capoeira is even more than a dialogue, you know? Capoeira, it is a way to learn and interact with other people, with a community, and not just through, um, what I'm saying is like, it's really, really through movement, each movement, that's why we call art, Capoeira is an art, it's not, a, it's not just a martial art, it's not just, um, it's, it's not just acrobatics, not just that, it's art in general, because you can express yourself. Yeah, yeah, 100%. You know? And that's why it's interesting when you be able to have someone you never met before in your life and you squat down in the Pedro Brimbao and you start a game. And when you start this game, you just, you learn so much from that person. Yeah, you know? And yeah, you understand how that person works or how that person, what they think about it, you know. And Capoeira give you the opportunity to do that, you know, have this dialogue more clear. Yeah, yeah, and, and it's funny, like, like you said, like, you can meet a person the very first time, you never shake those, those hands before, and then when you go into the hot, it's, it's, it's a really unique connection, and, and it's, it's hard to, like, put on exact words unless you see it, and, and unless you already practice in training capoeira. Yeah, I understand that, exactly, yeah. it's very hard to put in our words, you know, and uh, but I think that we are as a capoeirista, we have to kind of make ourselves force ourselves to learn to put that in words, yeah, you know? yeah, because 100%. we are teachers, we are educators, you want to teach, you want to educate other capoeiristas. If we cannot put in words, become very hard for those people understanding, yeah, you know, and that's why I, I make a huge effort to kind of study every time more and be able to kind of explain in details what do we do you know because i think more be able to explain better capoeira is going to be able and i will say you're gonna gonna avoid a lot of mistakes in the future, yeah yeah what I'm saying. yeah yeah exactly and and i like what you said of of like you know we're educators and and how can somebody learn capoeira from us if we don't if we are not able to ex to explain what we do Exactly. Like, that's why we have to make a huge effort, even though I know it's hard. Yeah, you know? yeah. And we have to make effort to be able to explain what you do. And when people have questions, sometimes say, oh, no, go there and put your effort, try by yourself, and then eventually be you're better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that doesn't really cut anymore, you know. That yeah, used yeah. to be the way we teach. But today we have to kind of like, okay, that's what you should be doing, you know. Have to be more specific. We have to exactly. be more specific. That, that that's a word I, I just had in my mind that we have to learn how to be specific in words so people can learn from us and especially people that see Capoeira for the first time. Correct. Yeah, and, and what do you think are they like like good components or, or or key components in the Capoeira game? Well, okay. Uh we have have to split the capoeira game in few areas. For example, we have of course we have the whole physicality, the whole physical areas. I'm saying like when you're talking about dance, martial arts, acrobatics, and those are the physical parts of capoeira. You know, you have to train and prepare your body like any other martial art. You know, any other uh, performing arts. You know, in yeah. general. And then you have a deeper on that is when you start to understand how to express yourself and then you become, become something more with strategy. Yeah. You start to understand what, how I'm going to use, because for me, those movements you learn, they, in the end of the day, they are tools. Yeah. They are tools. You yeah. learn how to, uh, when you use that tool, you're going to, you're going to, the action going to generate a reaction. I'm saying it's a tool we use. Oh, I wanted this type of reaction. I use this tool. I wanted this type of reaction. I use that tool. But how are we going to, uh, let's say, how are we going to line up those tools in a game and looking for the outcome, you know, and actually achieve that outcome you're looking for? 
that's a strategy, you know, yeah. that's the part when you have to really with experience you kind of develop different strategies, you know. And then you have the a deeper, like when you go deeper in the martial art, is what I call the soul part. It's like you, when you start doing that, all those things, you start to doing that with naturally by connecting yourself with our ancestors. Yeah. Like understand more about history, understand why we're doing that and why Capoeira have been progressing, how Capoeira have been progressing. These give you a deeper connection with ancestors and make something more like, uh, I would say your reactions become more natural. Yeah, you yeah. Know, not reaction the, because the because when we're talking about the strategy is something you learn and you train and you prepare. When you're talking about the soul, is on all that kind of combining together become natural and homogeneous, you know, and you just see this flow. That's what you kind of like go, oh, I need more flow. Flow is not just how you move. But a combination of all those strategies, all those movements, you know, in a way you can see, oh, looks so clean. Yeah. You know, looks so yeah. effortless, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like the I like the part where, where you mentioned of, of the connection and, and dodging with the strategy or dodging with that connection. Because sometimes it happens that that you if you see a video of yourself or, or happens many times in the hall that where you say like i don't even know how i dodge that but i dodge it <laughs> and then is i guess is the the reaction of you already know something is coming from there even if if because it's a deeper connection that, that the one that you're mentioning yes well that's a combination of many things for example yeah. when when you esquiva when you dodge from some situation you have a few ways to do that what the most normal way is the throughout the vision, yeah. your eyes, you see the movement, and then you dodge. Okay, that's good. That's worked for a while, but when you get a high level, that's start not work anymore because between the time you see it and the time you dodge, you don't have this time anymore. Yeah, yeah 100%. It's just not going to work, you know? And then you start to, to go to a different part, like the strategy part. And the strategy part is pretty much about, okay, I can see your movements and agree with you, uh, understanding the type of movements you have. I can now predict where you're going to do it. You yes, know? yes. And that gives you a little bit more time now because a little bit before happened, you kind of like, oh, he's going that direction. This is coming, you know? Exactly, yeah. And then you say, oh, I'm gonna, that's going to be amazing because, okay, you see this guy, for example, let's give an example here. I'm a Jinga, and then the guy go for Keshada, and then Keshada is a very basic movement. I hope everybody watched this podcast already know what Keshada it is. <laughs> yeah. you know? and then, but when I'm talking about the vision part is when you see that person doing the entrance for Keshada, that's the vision part. You expect yeah, exactly. Keshada. What I'm saying you expect Keshada. And then when the strategy part happens, is because that person moving in the game, you know, and then you kind of like during the game, you know, with this person doing many acro uh, many straight kicks, straight kicks, and acrobatics, straight kicks, straight kicks, acrobatics, or in round kick, straight kicks, straight kicks, acrobatic, and round kick. Okay. You know when the round kick is coming. Yeah. Because that person have a pattern and you understand the pattern and then it's, oh, now is the round kick, you know? Yeah. And usually you get more time. Usually you, it's easier for you. Yeah. And then you have the deeper where you understand what's the intention of the person in the game. And that is when you achieve really deep in the game. Yeah. Understand, okay, this person play with me right now. She's super happy and she want to just do acrobatics. Now this person is not too happy. He's trying to have some kind of interaction, stronger interaction, you know? Yeah. Oh, the person is super mad right now. He's going to explode over me right now. See, when you understand deeply what happened with the feelings, with the intention of your partner, and then you can predict even better what's going to happen. Yeah. And then when you combine all that together, that's what we call flow. 
Yeah, and and that and that that's when when that deeper connection, the one that you're talking about, right? Yes, exactly. That's the yeah. deeper connection because in the beginning, when you are you start your journey in Capoeira, you just see uh, the vision is your only resource, and with yeah. time, you understand a little bit of strategy, and then with time, you understand the feelings of that person in the game. You know, that's exactly what's kind of like you know. Yeah, uh, take a little longer for you be able to get you know that position. Yeah, and it, it's really good that you mentioned that part of, of like you know you you start feeling that person, and then it can be that person is really happy and they just they just want to like do movement and show up and and do a karate and all that. But then on the other side of the coin, there's also the the mad person, right? When when he, he start the game start getting a little bit violent. So how 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 do you keep well i guess i guess probably i'm already answering my question but how do you keep yourself calm in in that situation because sometimes they're going to be especially beginners when the games are getting a little bit harder uh people are going to start freaking out right and, th and then he gets he get, they get stuck on 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 back and forth back and forth kicking back and forth kicking instead of like that's the time to start strategy to to create a strategy to tell the other person. Capoeira, one thing about different between, for example, a lot of people say, oh, Capoeira is a martial art. Yes, yeah. it is in some ways. But uh, the difference, okay, we know what Capoeira, why people think Capoeira is a martial art. But uh, why Capoeira is not a martial art? You know, yeah. and that's exactly <laughs> the question I have to keep in mind. Why Capoeira is not a martial art? Because the martial arts really worry about about what's going on physically in the game. You know, attack, counterattack. What's the best counterattack? What's the best strategy for this counterattack at this point? You know, and if you do a good attack and you get that person a good attack, you win. Yeah. Because yeah. that's what it is. But if you're thinking about in a bigger scale, like in the society, you know, it's not always who have the best attack win yeah because for example let's say you are in a situation where you have two people and two people they have a struggle and they for some reason they have a conflict to solve your conflict you know for example let's say we are a kid mm -hmm. you know yeah and then have that kid and this kid have a conflict with your other kid if you want to just win the physical situation I go there, the kid bullying me, and then I con counterattack with, I don't know, some type of strike, and the bullying feel pain and run away. And yeah. I'm gonna say what? Oh, in a technical situation, I win. Yeah. Because I counterattack, and my counterattack was really good, and I win. Yeah. But if you go in a deeper level, for example, in the school, they don't like that. Because yeah. that's not a good example for the society. Correct. You know, you don't want people, you know, be violent and counterattack violence with violence all the time. We in Capoeira, we think in a bigger scale as a society. Sometimes just counterattack directly with a physical is not the best solution. Yeah. You have to understand what's going to be the solution, what all those people around watching this game today when you go to the internet all those people watching youtube all those people watching all different social media you know watch this thing what are they gonna think about it your solution for that situation yeah and sometimes the best martelo the best takedown the best straight kick is not the best solution yeah you know uh, okay and yeah. that's understand the whole game understand the whole context of the situation is important you know, and that's what I'm saying. When you say, oh, I'm going to get violent and get a little bit violent and you kind of like have to calm down. No, it's not just calm down, but understand why the violent happens. Yeah. Why the person feel that way and how the best way to calm that person down and keep in the game. Yeah. Because you, you don't want to get in a moment where you have to to stop the game because of course if you give a, a very strong kick a very good martelo or whatever kind of kick it is and that person pass out or break a teeth or something we stop the game yeah yeah for sure i have fun anymore yeah so the whole people 
for everybody in this roda where everybody was having fun. It's not fun anymore. Nobody. Yeah, wants it, to see it that. kills Nobody the vibes. That. Yeah, you know, you break the whole. Oh, but I win. Uh, yes, yeah. probably not because everybody <laughs> here, you know, not happy about it. You know, yeah. everybody was having fun, and now we're not having fun anymore. Yeah, you know, and what cost of that? You know what I'm saying, how much cost that? Yeah, that's why you have to figure out different solutions for different situations. You know, in some situations you can't scale, and that's yeah. exactly like good capoeirista. He knows how to go a little bit more physical in the game, but he knows how to back up this physical. When, also. when, and how? Yeah, and keep moving and keep the harder going during the whole time. We're yeah. not gonna, you know, stop the fun. You know, we're gonna just have more fun by being more physical because of course I like that and you like that and some people like that. You know, we yeah. love see a good martel, a good banda, you know, yeah, good yeah. take down, but not enough to be able to stop the fun. Yeah, you know? yeah, for you sure. You have to really keep that in mind all the time. Yeah, like the, there's this really old video of when uh Professor Thiago. Uh, Thiago Estilo, and and I think okay. Samis was uh, for Mando already. I don't remember. Yes. But the, it's a very short video. Or it's like 30 seconds video where they, they, he, get, he gets physical, but they, they're still having fun. It's In, super fun, you know, talking about this video. I, I'm going to have to say that because it's crazy you're talking about this video. Because I'm going to say to you is this video was, I was there. Oh, cool. And okay. I was in that event and I saw live and actually one of my students record the video and oh, the nice. person post the video. That's so know. cool. The, that event was in Nice, in France, south of France. Okay. You know, if I'm not wrong, I would say something around 2006, okay. maybe seven, something around that time. Yeah. You know, and uh, I was there in that event. It was an amazing event, super yeah, nice. I and can that tell by the end. Situation, yeah. That specific situation was super, super nice because actually, yeah, Zam is amazing capoeirista. Yes. Amazing capoeirista. You know, we know them. And then, um, but that was a very interesting situation because they was in the top. That's exactly when you are in the top of your game in the good day for your game. Yeah. Because they was playing. And then, if I'm not wrong, I think um, um, Zam starts the whole sequence with a Vingativa. Yeah, and then yeah. Still after the Vingativa, go for Tesoura. And then Zam is counterattack the Tesoura. And you have a sequence of, I would say, eight different counterattacks. Yeah. You know, something like you do when you drill at the academy, you know, with your friends. They did naturally, you know. Super natural, yeah. Like, and that's a super, because that's one of the beauties of the capoeira, you know, why that happened, how you training for that, yeah. how would that happen? The training for that, because exactly understand your body, have a full control, because that's the basic part. You have to have a full control of your body, but understanding how much effort, how much, how, uh, how much strength you're going to put in that situation. For example, if you, Zams go for a Mavingativa and Stilo go for Tesoura. Yeah. If that Tesoura is too strong and too fast, he might give the takedown, but it's not going to give the beauty of the continuity. Yes, like yes, yeah, yeah. Not gonna be able, if you go too strong, the guy going to fall on the ground. He's not going to be able to counterattack, and then you cut the continuity. What he did, he gave a Tesoura, but leaving time leaving moment for this person be able to do the counterattack and he's already with the counterattack you give a third counterattack yes counter yeah and you allow your partner to play at the same time you play you allow your partner to play too and then he creates this beautiful organic natural movement with so much flow and that's when we as a capoeirista love to see that you know, yeah. you have to see like your skill level, you know, at, at, at the highest, you know, training, preparing. Yeah. And, and that's the part where, where like training and, and I really like how, like you said, it was very organic. When the first time I saw a video, it's like, man, I got to see this again. <laughs> 
because it's, <laughs> it's so it's so many things at once and and it's like 30 seconds video and, and like you said it's like it's an attack of the counter-attack of the counter-attack of the con and it's like man what is happening here right now and it's it's it's, <laughs> it's, it's really cool to see and what i really like about the video is like none of them got defensive and none of them got like offended by the action of the other and but that's like, exactly the point i just yeah. want to go a little bit on that because what you touch is super important yes they, yes. they don't got offended you know why because they was already in the level of when you understand the goal of your partner yes yes when when, for example, let's say uh, Stilo was in base, you know, Thiago Stilo was in base and uh, Zams came for, for a Vingativa, he knew the intention of it. Zams wasn't taking him down, you or know, hurt him hard or floor and hurt yeah. his arm or something. Yeah. You already know that the principle, when you understand that from the principle and then you allow yourself to play the game, you Good know, point. the confidence of understand the game allow yourself to play the game you know that's why it's super important you kind of like you know uh, you kind of like to be able to understand the game first yeah you know, 100 yeah first. yeah that's super important you know? yeah and I, I really like like again that that interaction because he is that that um the goal, like you mentioned, the goal of that person to not wanting to hurt the other person, and and you can literally see in on um, on the game because sometimes you you see those videos of the Capoeira game where just by the body expression of the jinga, you already know something somebody's gonna get hurt in there <laughs> just by the body yes. expression of the jinga, and he's like, man, he's 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 about to to go down. <laughs> You're right, exactly. Yeah, and that's super important. More time you have in Capoeira, more you kind of like, uh, you understand the game. You understand before happen what's going to happen. And that's, for me, for example, I'm going to go in a, in, a, in, a, in a point what's super interesting where are we first talking about why Capoeira is not a martial art. Yeah. And now I'm going to tell you another reason because Capoeira more than a martial art is a self-defense. Yes, you know, yeah. and how it works, and people really have a hard time to understand how it works self defense in capoeira because they usually think self defense in capoeira, uh, oh, sorry, self defense in everything is pretty much when someone attack you, you defend yourself and you counter attack. Yes, that's what people understand of self defense, and that is a very old way to work with self defense, you know, because today in the society we live today, you know situations like that when you be able to have uh, a opportunity to defend yourself is more rare you know yeah. saying? because everybody have a lot of people everybody know martial arts everybody have uh different type of weapons you know yes and yeah. you don't really have like the opportunity to defend yourself like yeah. you know it's a very like uh, unique because usually if someone want to attack you today they go for the kill yeah. Saying. yeah yeah they go for the end goal yeah and then how it works but capoeira be able to make the evolution of that you know when i'm talking about that it's like how it works it works like this self-defense capoeira is not about when i get attacked it's about before the attack happens okay it's about the circumstance gonna happen the attack for example if you if you're thinking about uh, a normal person on someone you see someone come in your direction someone with bad intention to you you start thinking how i gonna how i gonna uh, defend myself in that situation yeah. in capoeira when we go to any place you are ready even though nobody came to you directly but you're already thinking about how i gonna defend myself if i need you yeah yeah and that's natural and but how you make that natural we don't teach you that yeah i'm gonna tell you because roda roda is that situation roda is a situation where everybody having fun until something happened and you don't have fun anymore 
you yeah. know, everybody having fun. And then something you don't expect come from somewhere. Yes. And you have to ready for that situation. How many situations you pass as a capoeirista when you play with someone? Oh, this guy's super nice, super boom. And you get a kick from nowhere. <laughs> and you said, oh, crap. Why did yeah. that kick me right now? Yeah, yeah, you 100%. You start to prepare yourself. Even though when you're having fun, you should be aware about the situation. You should yeah. be aware about your context. You should be aware about your surrounds. Yes, you know? 100%. And then naturally, when you start going, for example, I don't have to go to a bar, you know, but uh, uh, anywhere you go, in a club, in a bar, in a situation with friends, when you walk in, naturally, oh, everybody having fun here. Yeah, everybody having fun, everybody's money, but maybe something can happen. Yes, and yeah. If something good happen, who's the, uh, let's say, the people I don't have control of could put me in danger. Yeah. And yeah. How I can already thinking about and prepare myself to protect me on that situation. And yeah. you say, oh, but that's super hard. Everywhere you go, we're thinking about that. When that become natural, it's not that hard. When yeah, yeah, 100%. Hard every yeah. Day. You go hardest every day in your life. It, this become just natural. Yeah, you, you know? just scan the whole room at once. <laughs> exactly. You scan the whole room and you say, okay, that's what uh, it is. It feels you good, know? yeah. And that is self-defense because yeah. the self-defense is not is not use my body to defend myself. It's use my brain to defend myself. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, you like know that. what? This guy drinking too much. He, because I play with so many people in Capoeira and I start to understand how they work. So how they, the feelings, man, he start drinking too much. He start to getting a little bit violent, eventually this is going to finish bad. You know yes. what? I'm leaving right now. I'm 100%. leaving right now before it happens. Yeah. You know? yeah, that's true. I'm leaving right now before the situation I cannot control. 100%, you know? yeah. yeah. That's, today, that's what I consider self-defense. You know? Yes. It's not like learning a bunch of movement, how to take a gun, how to take a knife, how to this is a very, very, very hard situation, you know? Yeah. You have to be, I really like, I see those, uh, let's say, uh, workshops of self-defense and things like that. They work. Yeah. They, it's not because they don't work. What happens with those workshops, usually, you do it and you, oh, I did a workshop, I'm doing really well. And then you <laughs> stop doing for like two years. Yeah. And then you think in a situation, your body going to have the muscle memory to do the same movement you did two years ago. Yeah. You remember how it works? A hundred percent. Yeah. Who knows how to do that? Is the guy teaching? Because you know what? He teaches every day. Yeah. And every day he's getting better. If something happened with him, oh, yes, he have the whole reflex, the whole muscle memory to do it. But that's a rare situation. Yeah. If you don't yeah. practice yeah. every day, you're not going to be able to do it you know in a real life situation yeah and in a real life situation and and same in the other right when when you feel it and and it's going to change you, your entire body because and then you start getting nervous and then the nervous don't make you think and they make you think no no thinking about what is happening in the situation and then you do something that you don't even know that you you are you are able to do and or you mess it up or you or you get on a better situation so it can be probably both ways if you don't train enough that's correct that's yeah. correct exactly if you don't train enough that's why in capoeira we say all the time your body is your goal you know you have your body is your temple yeah you know you have to preserve your body all the time you have to take care of your body you have to take care of your reflexes your strength your power that's super super important for any situation you are prepared yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And and now that that we talk about about being prepared, what do you think would be good uh, method trainings to prove the capoeira game? I can you repeat that for me, please. Uh, training methods to improve the capoeira game. Oh, okay. Um, it's remember when I said in the beginning, you have this first part where the physical part, you know. Yeah. And. Um, and then you have this part or the strategy part. 
you know. And have this last one was the soap, you know. Yeah. And then I'm going to give you all those three you have to train for, you know, all those three you have to train for. And they are very, very different methods to train those, you know. Of course, the physical part is about your body. Yeah. Your body is super important in capoeira, you know, in any activity, you know, any athlete in martial art or any other activity, you know your body where you're going to have your best performance in anything and then have a full have a lot of information out there how to prepare your body you know what i'm saying is like oh okay of course you're going to start training the basic movements and then you're going to build on the top of that and one tip i can give you of course this is a i can talk days about that you know <laughs> but one tip to really help with train your body is understand it's not about it's not about the movements you know it's not about what movements you can do or you can't yeah because capoeira happened naturally organically in the game is about skills yes 100 percent yeah. about movements is about skills you know when you for example if you can move your body fast if you can squat fast you can jump fast if you can keep in one hand you can jump with both hands if your body more and more you develop skills and you have other skills like for example distance is a skill coordination is a skill um having many other skills you can work on it you know when you have skills any movement gonna work for you, you're gonna be good. True. And yes, true. Matter. Yeah. Oh, Ahmad. Oh, what's the technique for Ahmad? We have one basic technique. Yeah. But uh, uh, that's for you start your journey. When you get a certain point, it's not about that technique of the basic of the Ahmad anymore. When you get a certain point, is about is all about your skills. And yeah. if you can do armada and stop armada in the middle, skive in the middle of armada, do a backflip in the middle of armada, do a martel in the middle of armada, you can do whatever you want because you do have the skills. And this idea about armada is kind of, is not important anymore. Yeah. You know, because you become the skills what's going to matter in that situation. Yeah, because if you... For your body. Yeah, because yeah. if, if, you, if you're not able to... to to move or or to bring your leg up how how you're gonna execute the armada the armada if you can't even move you know exactly yeah. you know your body is your temple you have to work on that yeah um but the second part i say for the strategy and that's come with experience you know the strategy True. is about like go to others, go to different places, play for different people all the time, see as many as games as possible out there. And you say, oh, if I watch a video, I can learn. Of course you can learn and watch a video. You know, I learned so much watch videos, you know. Yeah. But uh, also nothing compared to the experience actually you go there and do yourself. Yeah, 100%. You know, percent is important. All the, uh, It's a combination of those, not just in a video, it's not just present a combination of those is amazing yeah. that's what you're going to work the most and that's going to be a better idea about strategy how many strategies how people work in general what you can do about those and to make all those two actually more smooth more let's say natural more organic you know and make this beautiful performing movement with time and that's when we're talking about the soul of the movement Okay. And you're going to learn that by understanding more about history in Capoeira and actually connect yourself with the music in Capoeira. The connection of the music give you more that. What I'm saying, you're going to, you think, oh, music is not going to help my game. Of course it will. Yeah. And that's exactly the point. When you start to understand about music, connect to better with music and train harder music, you're going to see your game changes. You have this connection. You have this, you know, this movement is more having much more flow in general. Yeah, yeah. You you start understanding the timing, and then you start understanding the 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 rhythm, and and you know the the music and the energy too that like is transmitted through the music and through the instruments and and all those. Um, is is funny that you mentioned of the of the music because that's such a key 
so, such an important key in our Capoeira game. It's not, it's not going to be the same that play harder without music, that playing harder with a lot of like really good music. Yeah, when you get a certain level, you can see clearly the difference. You know? Yeah, you 100%. See, I see amazing athletes in harder sometimes, but I don't see great capoeiristas, and that's the difference. You know, I really like that. Yeah. Not necessary is a great athlete, you know, and vice versa, you know. And I see many athletes there, but sometimes you don't see great capoeiristas. That's true. That's true. I really like that. I really like that. And and uh, the the last question to wrap it up. Uh, what would be well the last two questions? So, do you think training long sequences can help to improve the game? Of course, you know, yeah. that's totally part of the, the, the training method, you know. Yeah. Um, the long sequences, uh, everything have your place. And have yeah, your for sure. You know, you know, when you start, of course, you're going to start short sequences because the, what the happen of the short sequences, they give you a better movement because you're focusing more in the movement, you know. And the person at the beginning, that's what they need. But yes. At some point of the training, they have to start move on for long sequences, you know. And what that's going to bring to you is make it better transitions between movements, better connection between movements, and you're going to take a little, take actually take a little, take a lot of your thinking during the game. Yes. Because when you work with short sequences, all the time your mind have to connect with the next short sequence, next short sequence, next short sequence, you know. And then when you have long sequences, you already start, you know what, how your body moves all the way to the end. Oh, and like of that. course, in a certain point, that's not helpful either. You know? Yeah, yeah. Because that's going to give you few advantages, you know, and then you're going to, uh, the end of the day, like we're talking about, is all about skills. That's going to give you a lot of skills. Yeah. But yeah. later, you need a different type of skills. What I'm saying is, for example, when you have this long sequence, it's going to be amazing because your game is going to have more flow. You're going to have to understand more how about thinking. You don't have to think as uh, consistent all the time. But at some point, your opponent is starting to understand what your sequences are, and then he can predict where you're going to be. Yeah, hundred percent. And then you cannot repeat the same sequences all the time. Of course, in a certain level, everything capoeira, everything in any activity, any martial art, have layers of understanding. You know, when a teacher comes to you and shows something, and you learn, say, oh, but that's too easy. Give me something else. No, no, no. no. The idea here is uh, yes, that's it is easy because yeah. you need. Oh, but I want to learn that super hard movement with the super well to get that point you need a lot of different type of skills 100 yes for you to do correctly of yeah. course you can do it but it's not going to be correctly not going to be the right time and you're going to be the type of two you don't know how to use yet yes that's why you kind of create those layers where we start you know create basic skills until you go to more advanced skills when you get in that advanced skills, and then you're gonna be able to work with those more advanced tools. Yeah, yeah. What do you think is a is a long sequences? How many moves you think that we can say? Oh, yeah, you know, this sequence is too short, or this sequence uh, starting on well, six seven movements start getting long sequence. Depends. It's not just about how many movements, but also about type of movements. Okay, but to Good give point. you a little like a way to kind of like understand better, I will say after 10 movements, you start becoming a long, a long sequence. And that okay. can go up to 30, 40 movements. I already trained in sequence with 30 movements. Okay. Yeah. 40 movements. It can be longer than that. But yeah. I'm saying like, just to get some idea after 10, yes. But also depends a lot of what type of movement. You know, it's not like in a long sequence, it's, it depends what type of moves you use because you have different um uh, for example, if you have more defense movements, more acrobatic movements, more, um, uh, I would say, attack movements, counterattacks, you know, those type of movements, they have different weight in a sequence. Yeah. You know, 
you know, and then you have to kind of like maybe a little, you want to balance that sequence better because also that sequence, you want to be a long sequence. You have to understand one thing I do a long sequence with 25 movements, but yeah. those movements, they have no utility for you in the game because the way I put those sequence was, a, a less, was random. I just choose random movements and put them in sequence. And, oh, that's amazing. No, that's not. Because this is not a sequence actually useful in the game. Yeah. A good long sequence is a sequence actually happened in the game before. Yeah. Where you yeah. see, you give it the time, the kick, the time of counterattack, what's the next step, what, for example, I can tell you, let's make a sequence where you're going to give, I don't know, uh, four round kicks and four straight kicks in a row. Okay. Not a useful is that's not a useful uh, sequence because you can do one, two, three, but eventually you're gonna get attacked and you have another kick. You yes, hundred percent. Shiva there, you have to put a take down there. You have to put uh, go to the ground. You have to do uh, a different type of movement. You yeah. know, and then become something actually useful. You know. 10 straight kicks in a row and a backflip in the end doesn't really help. Yeah. You know, you have to be a sequence where those, and then that's why when you see, for example, I go a lot of classes and workshops and, and I see, you know, sometimes I see students do some sequences and I say, in training, oh, like my training, it looks amazing. Yeah. But it's not useful. Yeah. You know? Are you going to be yeah. able to use it in the harder now? <laughs> Probably not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Know? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, you know that's what's kind of a little bit hard, uh, complex to understand how this sequence works. Yeah, yeah, and again, it comes with experience, right? Right, with experience in the harda and training, and of just course. With and do you wanna do you wanna a good good uh, advice on that? It's like, well, go online. That's one actually the video helps a lot. Go yeah, online, you get the best game of the best person you like. For example, just mention a game from Zamish and still you know you yeah. like that learn that yeah. go get a partner and train that sequence yeah you know put all those movements together in a sequence and train it because i don't because those those was a real life a real life experience a real hard experience you know and those are the ones you're probably going to be able to use yeah you know and not something just came into your mind and i just put 25 movements together in a train by myself yeah yeah it's not it, it have to happen like you mentioned that uh before that is better when you build a sequence out of something that already happened in the heart that you saw it like exactly. okay yeah this this actually works exactly exactly you start to that way for example when you go deeper and you understand better uh for example i can like i can make a sequence where i already have in my mind all the probably movement's going to happen in that level, in a different level. For example, if you are a beginner, I know usually what type of sequence of beginners is more useful for them. Yeah. When you are, in, you know, if you are more advanced, you know, oh, those type of sequences have to be in that direction. In terms yeah. Of you kind of like with time and experience, you can be able to do those, but that's hard you should start to like just repeating all the sequences, you know, from real others. Yeah. Yeah. So something at least uh, basic where we, it can get you started somewhere so you can eventually advance to something or a little more complex. Correct. Nice. Nice. Oh, Mestri, thank you very much. It was super nice to, to talk about this. It's, it's such a complex conversation that we can be here for, for days. <laughs> Exactly. No, I yeah. know. Fast so fast. You start and then boom, it's done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, you and, know. and again, we can be here for days, but we, we eventually we can probably do another, another one where we talk a little more about like specific points. Sure. Of course. Well, I think just give you an idea right now, maybe your listeners, you know, if you guys want to send us, you know, questions, you know, yeah. if you have any questions, maybe for future for podcast, you know, definitely would be nice you know just let's keep moving you know because i think you know a lot of people in my experience what happened is when for example we talk a little bit and you kind of like get us some subjects that's solve some questions but create more questions yeah you know? yeah, yeah yeah create more questions than solve questions what's amazing 
that's the good part about capoeira you know you can go definitely deeper and deeper in that you know and that's going to be the fun part yeah 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 now it, it were really really nice to to hear feedbacks from people being like oh well, what about this situation and this kind of training so so is, if anyone has a question absolutely let us know so we can we can get that, that answer going and probably get more questions too <laughs> Yeah, of course, and that's the idea. You know, more answers, more questions, more questions, more answers. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, Mason, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Let's talk soon. And yeah. have a good day, okay? Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for getting this far. Remember, please subscribe. Give us a thumbs up on Facebook or YouTube. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. This is going to help us and help me to get bigger numbers and bigger subscribers so we can give more information okay please if you're listening i know you're listening i know you're watching please give me a subscribe give him a give, give me a like okay i know you're watching right here or listening all right have an amazing day thank you so much for tuning in and listening every single episode especially the episode we just did all right thank you so much peace